Hey guys! Hello! So as many of you know, we uh, have some instruments. We do. And that one right there is one of my favorites. It's my Hammond M3 organ with a blonde finish. Yes, it was made about, what, 1950s? Yeah. Earlier, maybe? 1950s. And that uh, Leslie there, the speaker cabinet next to it, is a very hard to find color mm -hmm. in a Leslie. The organ's fairly rare in that color too. So we've had that, and of course our big piano, and our Wurlitzer, but... We have a new addition! We have a second rare <laughs> M3 uh, blonde we do. organ. So what we're going to do is sort of walk you through some of uh, its features, and more importantly, and probably more useful mm. for people who watch Craigslist and eBay for such things, we're going to show you some of the things you need to look out for and what you need to do to move it and what you need to do when you get it home. Yep. Alright, so the first thing you're going to be wondering about when you spot one of these things is, uh, does it work? Yep. And once you get it plugged into the wall, you kind of have to know a trick. Down here, underneath this side, on the older ones there's two switches. One of them is for the startup motor and one of them is for the actual, um, well, this one's ignition, you know, start up, and this one is for the synchronous motor that runs while the organ's running. So you actually have to get it up to speed, you can hear it, and then hold that one up, and then nut that one loose, and it'll continue to run. Alright, so here's the back side of those switches. We've got the startup switch here and the run switch there. That one's been replaced by the looks of it, it looks like it's a newer type of switch, which is fine. And those are taking care of this uh, motor assembly. See that one back there? Alright, basically what we have here is there's a shaft that's in there spinning gears and it runs all of the tone wheels that are inside of this contraption. All 96 of them. Each one spins at a particular frequency and it taps in through all of these wires to get you all of your tones that your keys are going to hook up to. This is where the magic happens. This is the source of all that beautiful Hammond B3 sound. This tone generator is exactly the same one as you would find in a B3, which has been used on every recording of every rock song ever, <laughs> almost. All right? Directly below that, we have our amplifier. We've got our power supply section here, and we've got our preamp section and our power tubes, preamp and you know whatnot here, and then the power tubes there. And uh, it's a fairly simple in an M3 like this. It has power tubes because it has a built-in speaker. In a B3, there won't be power tubes because you don't have. An internal speaker you'll be connecting it to one of those Leslie cabinets like we showed you earlier this particular speaker is actually interesting because it doesn't have a magnet this big beefy back part is actually a field coil a very high DC voltage goes into that coil creating an electromagnetic field and then as the uh, polarity on the coil of the speaker changes against that field it pushes the speaker in and out it has a much better high response than a permanent magnet speaker does, a much more airy response, if you will. So there's a few things to note on this particular organ. You see how there's a spring here on this. This entire assembly should be floating on springs, but if you look back here, that corner is missing its spring. That corner is missing its spring. And this spring's just laying here. You need to have all four springs in order for the springs to lift this up so that it can swing and not be affected by vibrations and mostly so that you don't have to talk really loud to be heard over it vibrating the whole case like a resonator. So it's usually much quieter with those springs in place. The other thing to notice here is that there are little funnels here. When the case is over the top of this there's matching oil reservoirs that sit right over the tops of these and you want to use the correct type of oil. We actually have Hammond Organ Company generator oil. We're very lucky to have this. They don't really make it anymore. But uh, if you can get a hold of some of this proper stuff, great. 
If not, you'll have to find something that has a very similar formula. You can check online to find out what works. You can't use just normal oil because the oil is traveling through from reservoirs through threads along the threads to all of the different parts that it needs to oil. And the wrong kind of oil will solidify in those threads and it will make it so that it gets gummed up and it can't transfer the oil to where it needs to be lubricated. Is it like sewing thread? Yeah, it's like thread, cotton thread. That's impressive. Yes, it's amazing, amazing how they did this. All right, let's see how it sounds. Hello, Whiskers Foot. Hello, Whiskers Foot. Here, we've got the gas pedal. You can hear it squeaking. We're gonna have to oil that so that it doesn't squeak. Yeah. This controls the volume going into the amplifier. Okay. So if I've got a tone, I can control the volume there. On this side, we have the pedals. Like so. We have the lower manual. And we also have the upper manual. Over here, we have the various controls that control various aspects like how much tremolo. Very simple stuff. And the magic is up here where you can adjust which tones are playing for each key. So here we have the root. Cool. And it's tapping into the right tone wheels to the right key and then you're uh, selecting which harmonics of that fundamental that you want it to play. Cool. Alright, so if I set this back out to basically where it was, you get a fairly nice sound. Here, I'll hand it over to Addy for a moment. Mwahaha! <laughs> basic idea of the sort of sound that these instruments are capable of just in their normal state before you do anything to them. Alright, so when you first get one of these, chances are some of the wires inside the tone generator are probably going to be broken from shipping it. So, what you have to do is you need to hold down a key and check if the fundamental for that key is working and each successive harmonic. Is there now, an easier way to, to know do that? That these fold back. So on an M3, they don't fold back in the uppers. There's no tone coming from this draw bar above this F sharp. Okay. Okay? But there is one there. It stops folding back for that key there. Mm -hmm. So do take into consideration that not all these draw bars connect all of these keys. In a B3, they would all connect, and it's called fold back. M3s aren't folded back, so they don't have as much range up here. Mm -hmm. So I can try to find a key. See, that one is supposed to be connected, mm -hmm. but it's not. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to dig into the back of it and find where that key, where that wire is broken, and reattach it, resolder it. Okay. So that's one main thing. Another thing is that these tend to be very staticky when they haven't been used for a while. And what we use to fix that is contact cleaner, which we have a can of right down here. I've used this on mine, and it works quite well. It's just a CRC contact cleaner. This does the job. Okay. Where do we put that on? In the front, but I would actually actually recommend coming around the back and shooting it forward. 
you can see the things in here and I can get up in there. Oh, let me get back around. Hey, I shot some cleaner in there. Was it this one? Yeah. Yeah, it was that one. Now it's all slick. And once it's clean, it won't crackle like that anymore. Cool. In each corner of this, there's a, uh, basically a uh, mounting point on here where a screw goes in. Uh -huh. And there's a nut that is a T-nut that normally sits so that the T is fit up into there. Yeah. So when you attach it, it can float. But if you take the screw off and flip the T over so that the T sticks down, and then you screw the screw back in, it compresses this generator down against the body so that it can't swing. And you need to make sure that you flip those over and secure it before you move this, because if this is swinging around, take a look at all these little tiny wires. If this is swinging around in transport, when the movers flip this thing upside down or on its side, these will break. And that's how you start to lose tones. Don't stick your fingers in there. Ooh. 240 volts. They're very small wires. Yeah. So finding wires that are broken, it's possible, but it's really difficult. And uh, it's better just to tie the tone generator down beforehand so you don't have to think about it. So anyway, I hope that's a good introduction to the basics on what you need to look for. Uh, we're going to get into here and we're going to clean all the tubes, clean all the tube sockets, uh, oil the generator so that it's uh, all good as new. And we're going to need to find some springs to get this tone generator up off the ground and somehow come up with a replacement for those T-washers so that we can lock it down when we need to. Cool. Does that cover everything? I think so. Excellent. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye. We post videos all the time, so don't forget to subscribe. And follow us on Twitter at TYMKRS.